Hi, everyone. I'm Sal, co-creator of Salt and Pepper Productions. And I'm Pep. I actually exist, and I'm not a figment of Sal's imagination. <laughs> so this is Pep, the co-creator of the channel, making their first debut. Yeah, I'm here. I actually exist. <laughs> um, and <laughs> Welcome aboard. <laughs> And today we're going to talk about the promised Neverland. It is December 29th, the day we're recording this. So the season two premiere of the promised Neverland is about a week away, which is exciting. It's been a very long wait. I remember Russ and I were texting recently and he was like, when, when did we watch season one again? And I was like, uh, I think we watched it in the summer of 2019, and season two is coming out in January 2021. So a very long wait, but very happy that the show is finally coming back. And Pep and I wanted to discuss some of our thoughts on season one and also some predictions going into season two. Uh, and we will be using uh, the trailer as a reference for any information about Season 2. So if you haven't watched that, you might want to pause the video and watch that instead for a second and then come back. I mean, don't just watch that and then go somewhere. You know, come back, please. <laughs> yes, please come back because we want you to be a part of the discussion too. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Sal... Do you have any first comments to make? So I'm happy that the show's coming back. And before, like, initially, I didn't want to watch the trailer because I wanted to go into the show as blind as possible. But then I thought it would probably be better to watch the trailer before recording this video. And one interesting thing about the trailer is. So in season one, we saw Sister Crone with this pen, which she left behind for the children. I think she left it in Norman's drawers, and then Norman left it behind for the others to use. And in the trailer, we see the children using the pen, and it appeared that if they twisted the pen a certain way, it would reveal a hologram that resembles the owl image that we saw on the book plates in the books in the library back at the house, which was really interesting. And the children said that they were going to use this to find the person who left them those messages. What did they say his name was? Um, I don't remember, but I'm going to call him Mor Moriarty. I um, believe it started with William. Down. I have it written down. It was William... Minerva, I think. Minerva. Um, like I... Mor 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 Moriarty. We're going with Moriarty. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that was interesting. Yeah. That was interesting. I... Uh, learning that that pen... Like, I wanted to talk about the pen in our predictions video b before I even saw the trailer, and the trailer surprised me. Like, I didn't realize that the pen had some... Technology, yeah, technology some interesting in technology to it although i did assume that it would become important since mm -hmm. sister crone left it behind for them and i think it even had the initials wm on it, did. it i remember that um but i one i don't know if it was actually a hologram because i thought that was just uh, like an overlaying of the plates to reference um earlier but i think you might be right i thought that it was going to contain a map of like the world and that they were gonna like be playing with the pen and they were gonna like unfold a map or something that was like wrapped on the inside because of you know i didn't think it was gonna have some internal mechanism or anything or it was gonna have like something to help them like some code to help make sure that they're okay like they're gonna run into people and it will be like a hey if you have this pen you're a-okay or something like that right and it's interesting. I'm kind of wondering why Sister Crone, like, did Sister Crone ever use it or ever try to use it to help herself? I mean, she obviously knew it was going to be important to the children, hence why she left it before 
going off to base grandmother and potentially get killed, which ultimately is what happened. Yeah. So I think that she knew it was, uh, I think she took it because it was interesting, but I don't think she really planned, like used it herself for anything because she again had like the heart stopping thing in her chest. So she, there's really like no option for that. She probably just thought of it as a mild curiosity. That's true. And I'm guessing the person who dropped the pen dropped it on pers- dropped it on purpose because basically in the flashback we saw of Sister Crone getting the pen. She saw a human, it looked like a man talking to I think one of the demons, and then we see the man walking away and then the camera pans down to reveal the pen lying on the floor. So I'm guessing that the man actually dropped it on purpose in the hopes that somebody would find it. That does seem to be like the implied implication of it. Uh implied implication. <laughs> um I actually though have a really interesting uh I actually think that in my that um okay so hear me out for a second. If you've watched the trailer, you you know there's a scene um where they're basically there's the demon guy with the long arms behind them and there's a girl with um mm-hmm. the lantern in front of them. You know what I'm talking about, right? Right. Yeah. And then um Luf- Lewis I know I'm messing up his name. I always mess up his name. Emo boy. <laughs> Ray. Ray. Not even close. I mean, I was going to go with Luke or Lewis, and I was thinking, like, light for some reason, so I was close. Um, I always mess up their names. I don't know why. Uh, none, of y- none of y'all heard me, like, mess up Karone's name for, like, 30 minutes straight, 20 you times in a row. You it wrong. It's Crone, not Karone. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um but like he's ba- um Ray says something interesting he's like you're a demon aren't you like in the in the title and it made me think well uh oh there's gonna be one of these twists of she's not a human she's actually some form of demon and we see there's different species of demon there's like the long armed guy demon who seems to be intelligent and then there seems to be like these animal demons the ones that look like wolves yeah, the ones that were crawling on all fours. Yeah, so I actually think that, like, maybe there aren't really that, uh, that many humans in the outside world, uh, and that the humans that who visited, who were covered in, um, like, robes and were had, had their faces covered and all that, they were actually just, like, a subspecies of demon. Hmm. That, like, Interesting. Their task is to build farm and build clothes for the children they're just that's their subspecies of demon and like one of the demons that we saw in the trailer like when ray said you're a demon he was like nobody has called me that in a while or yeah. something like that so either that's and not it seems the... like the children might actually collaborate with these guys so yeah. maybe that would be interesting if there were actually demons that were on their side yeah I was or thinking... some subspecies of demons that was on their side yeah. Human sympathizing demons, vegan the vegan demons. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have um we have uh, demons for the humane treatment of humans. <laughs> <laughs> um, that'd be an interesting twist. Um, but like, so speaking of the demons, like there probably is some hierarchy with the demons because several times throughout the first season, people kept referencing him or the special one, which, and the way they talked about him, it seemed almost godlike in a way, and, like, when Isabella was on the, was talking to grandmother during a scheduled check-in via the radio, they were talking about the boss and the Tiferi, and when I looked up Tiferi, one of the search results that came up was from names.org and it said that Tiferi means gift of God or answered prayer Mm. and in the Japanese dub like whenever they talked about the boss or the special one or him or he it was always 
the H in he was always capitalized, which is something people usually do when they're talking about God, which yeah. seems to me that the whoever the boss is or this person is, he's probably perceived as a God or maybe the, one of the higher ups or the highest up in the hierarchy for the demons, which makes me think that maybe he's going to be the main antagonist, the final boss, if you will. Yeah, see, I have a very similar um, understanding, except for I, I go the a little bit step farther. And I say he's literally a god, and that he doesn't, he's not like a physical character. It's like their god, and that's my that's what I thought at least. And that um, because we see that scene of the uh, like council of P of demons talking. Yeah, where um, they're all sitting around the table and talking about the harvest. Yeah, and, and they're like how playing the with the heart flowers. Yeah, and they were talking about the high quality children, i.e., Norman, Ray, and Emma, and how they were ready to be shipped out. Yeah. And how the boss, he's going to get the high quality meat, mm -hmm. how his meal is going to be more special than ours. Yeah. I kind of assumed that he that like they were like kind of the leaders of like they were like the, the the main villains or the leaders of uh the demons and that um like they were like the priests of this of this he tafari guys uh or the person they're celebrating that the, their god's priests and that basically their um society is basically kind of like a uh, a theocracy led by like the priests of their high god hmm. I don't and, know, that's my interpretation and isabella even said that the children on my farm are raised to be eating by a special one which makes hmm. me think that maybe whoever this higher up is whoever he is is probably the person Norman was fed to, which is yeah. sad to think about. I actually don't think Norman's dead. I don't think he's dead yet. Yet, yet is the key word here. Um, I I imagine that the Tafari isn't like immediately eminent. Like it's not like tomorrow. It's like maybe because right now it's they're in like February. I think. Uh, or yeah, January. they escaped. The children escaped from the house on Ray's 12th birthday, which was in January 2046, I believe. Okay. Yeah, the show, most of the show takes place in 2045, and since Ray's birthday was in January... It's 2046. Right. So, I think that, like, the T3 is going to be, like, sometime during the summer, or, like mid-spring i don't think it i don't think it makes sense for like a ritual to be, or like some celebration to be like in the middle of the winter in like january so they're probably like and they sound like they're preparing for it so it sounds like they're getting well, so the show started when connie was shipped out in october and they mentioned the harvest so like fall time i guess is like typically when harvests take place i think yeah, normally, but like I, that could be true. But I, I, I imagine that like harvesting people, <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, doesn't work like the same way as harvesting wheat or something like that. So like, I would think that, and they didn't like harvest a bunch of kids. Like a bunch of kids didn't get sent out in that time period. So I'm imagining that like for the Tafari, whenever it is, which is in my opinion going to be like late spring or like midsummer they um they're going to like uh, then harvest everyone so i think i don't think and i think that because of that they're going to want like norman fresh for the tafari and you know if they have like a couple of months or even a month remaining they're not going to want to kill him right right away so he's going to still be alive and he's probably um either still alive and kicking around or like something something still around some, in some way and not well dead, there was a tough yeah well there was a time gap between norman getting shipped and 
the children escaping. I think maybe a month or two months. Yeah, so you did even between that like, time longer. I think they just uh they just he was ready, so they just took him to wherever they needed him, or they needed to do maybe they needed to do some like preparations for the Tafari feast, and so they needed him for that. And they just needed it, and, and he's still alive somehow. Maybe I just want Norman to be alive. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah. Um. That that is that is my theory. Also, the show likes to do like quick turns, so I can imagine like maybe not in the next season, but like the third or fourth season when they finally reencounter with um with the farm and all that. They're gonna find like Norman still alive somewhere strapped down to some sacrificial stone or something. Hmm. So, another thing, because, so the trailer focuses mostly on the children in the outside world, like we saw Emma, Ray, and the others interacting with those demons, and... But I'm wondering if we're ever going to jump back to Isabella and the kids who were left behind, like... One interesting thing about the show is that when you rewatch it, you notice how much was actually happening in the, in background. the background. Yeah, like we saw, Phil was the one that Emma put in charge of things while the older kids left. And when you rewatch the show, you realize that Phil is in the background and is treated as he gets a little bit of a focus. So you, just enough so that they you, think he's an imposter, <laughs> that you think he's like, a spy. He a gets a little get like he gets a little bit of focus, so you realize so I guess realize, oh, they were actually building up to this moment that yeah. he's a high scoring kid and he's noticing things like he noticed like there would be scenes where he noticed something seems to be up. Yeah. And then when Emma tells him the truth, he's like, So that's what all of that was about. Like he wasn't really surprised. Yeah. It was more of a I get it. Yeah. And I mean, there was even like that scene in like the second episode where, or second or third episode, I forget which one, where they're like being watched, where it's like the camera is like viewing them from like leaves through like a tree or a bush as if someone's watching them. And I, th I, I think that that was like um, Phil watching them, that he followed them out and was like watching them. And they just never I think I know what that. scene you're talking about. Like yeah. it could have been Phil or it could have been Sister Crone or somebody well, else. Sister Crone wasn't them. Sister Crone wasn't added yet. Well, Sister Crone showed up at the end of I think she showed up the next two. episode. She showed up at the end of episode two. Oh. Did I have and then episode now? three. And then episode hmm. three was Episode three was when the kids played tag and when the children were talking about is there a way to break the tracking devices yeah so so i think it could have been sister crone watching them but if it was phil that would be interesting yeah i don't think she was, I, for some reason i don't think she was introduced yet uh at that point i think she was introduced the episode after but yeah I she was introduced in episode two at okay. the very end yeah okay so i think she okay then she's probably introduced after this like, near the end, after they came back from their, like, running around recess sort of thing. Uh, and... So, uh, Sister Crone showed up after Emma and Norman told Ray everything. Yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if the scene happened then or not, but I... I'm pretty sure the scene happened after that, after she, Sister Crone showed up. Okay, well... Okay, then throw my theory out the window. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably around. Oh no, that, I feel I feel like that's wrong though. And I, it's been a bit since I rewatched the show. I rewatched the show like um a couple of weeks ago, so it's not the freshest in my mind. Um, but I feel like there's a difference there, and that um, and that it was, I thought it was Phil, and they were like, you know, oh here's a little Easter egg for later when you get to the end of the series. That's who was watching them at this scene. Because you, you think, or maybe it was mom. Maybe it just was mom and or Isabel, and we didn't. And she just never mentioned it. And is that good at sneaky? She's just amazing stealth. All the stealth. She rolled a nat twenty. <laughs> 
anyway, back to season two predictions. So, I based on the trailer, so. it's going to focus on the outside. But sorry, what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say talk. I was going to try and like talk about the demon's origins, and I was only going to talk about this because um, in the trailer, we never see an animal or bird that looks like one that's native to our world, right? Like, you never see a regular bird, and you never see a deer or a wolf. All we see are those weird light birds and the wolf demons, right? The, the demons that are walking on all fours? Yeah, I'm going to call them wolf demons because I, I don't... I. I don't know if they are the same as, like, the other demons, because they don't seem to have, they, they never talk, and they don't seem to behave in the same way as the other demons did, because in the last episode, we saw demons carrying, like, big, heavy, um, bladed weapons, but here we just see them on all fours, and acting very animalistic, so I think mm -hmm. they are, you know, actually, like, some form of wildlife compared to like a sentient creature. Interesting. So I think that the world has been completely changed. That it's not just it's not just demons just have, haven't just replaced humans. Their other wildlife that came from wherever they came from also is also taking over the world and that a lot of like the normal fauna of the world is not how we would imagine it anymore. Interesting. I don't know if you have anything to say on that. Well, Sister Crone said that humans do exist in the outside world, and I think I think it was Dawn even mentioned it in the trailer, so... Hmm. I mean... Well, see... The thing is, is, when Sister Carone says that she saw she, 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 she the humans exist, it's because she saw those like hooded figure figures um, come and like drop off supplies for the kids and all that. Which and I, she saw humans at headquarters, like the guy yeah. who left the pen behind. Yeah, um, but she didn't like see them like face to face. She just saw the figures and and and, and thought they were humans. And they were all shrouded. No, there definitely were humans. Like, mm. she saw a demon talking to a regular-looking human. Okay. Like, the person I, who left the pen behind. Yeah, I, I for some reason, thought they were, like, shrouded and that you couldn't really see them that well. And that was why I was going to say that, oh, maybe... maybe the, cause remember I mean, my, they like, were shrouded so you don't have a clear look at facial features or anything but like the regular humans weren't wearing coverings or anything like the guy who left the pen behind yeah i was going to say earlier that it was like because remember earlier i um was talking about like the um demon de i was saying when we were talking about like the tears of demons we were talking about there being demons who were um what's the word who were like that was the demons who actually were bringing supplies. I thought that I was like, oh, it's just a subclass of demons. There's not actually any humans out in the world. And that's going to be the twist again. And there's going to be a species of demons that just looks kind of like humans. Like, or maybe there's both. Maybe there's a subspecies of demons working with regular humans mm -hmm. as well. Oh, maybe. Maybe like, there's a, possible. maybe there's human-demon relations in like the in the outside world like an alliance maybe i remember one time we were talking that's a about... really twisted alliance if you ask me <laughs> <laughs> we work together and then they eat our children <laughs> like and i remember when one time we were talking about the nameplates with william's name on it and yeah. i remember you suggested that maybe william isn't a person maybe it's an organization and that's just the name of the organization yeah or at least like, like and, the founder of the organization or something like that like that would be interesting like there could be an alliance in the outside world that's secretly humans helping. and demon sympathizers yeah, humans and demons collaborating to try to help the children by sending them secret messages via pens and nameplates and stuff like that. 
Yeah. And like maybe maybe like other things as well. I'm sure they have other things they snuck in. Though um it does bring up like another interesting question is that do the demons have to eat human in order to live, or is it like ooh piece of candy for them? And that is just like something they really enjoy, or is it like a necessity to their diet? Hmm, that's like, a good they, question because like, do they eat if salads? They, like that's a good point actually because again, it looked like those were demons in the trailer that the children were interacting with. Yeah, and if those demons actually end up being allies to the children, then how do they live? Like, what do they eat? Off? What do they feed on? Yeah. Um, because basically the children are treated like meat. Like basically yeah. their tech scores determine what grade of meat they are or how valuable they are. Yeah. So like. So I don't. Me, I would, oops, go ahead. Like my thought was I wouldn't think that they were like a special treat or candy or anything. But the point you made about how. Do the demons need human flesh to live? That's actually an interesting point because, again, if there are demons who sympathize with humans and if those demons or whoever those people were in the trailer are allies or are going to become allies, then the question is, how do they survive yeah. without human meat? Um, I think that they might there maybe it has to do with like tears maybe there's like demon the, the lower tier demons can eat eat like what we eat and are fine and then the upper tier demons have to eat human flesh or get to eat human flesh more so because they're higher tier i feel like they're eating bread and all sorts of other things as well i can't imagine that because like it seems like the human meat production is like really slow because it takes like six years for people to grow. So I feel like it's a rather, like, we know there's at least five farms. We don't know how many there actually are. But I feel like it's a rather slow thing and that meat is maybe not a, or at least human meat is not a delicacy per se, but like something that they treasure or hold more dear. It's like a more rare part of their diet that they just don't want to do without. Well, the shipments usually take place every two months, if I remember correctly, and they're constantly, and whenever they ship somebody out, they get somebody to replace whoever they shipped out, like Carol yeah. was Connie's replacement. Yeah, I, I, I know that, but, like, they're six-year-olds. They don't have a lot of meat on them. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I have a six-year-old niece. She's tiny. <laughs> there's... there's <laughs> There's not, like, a lot they're gonna be able to get. It's, like, one... Especially since they're rather large. Like, from from what we can see, they're, like, at least two to three times as tall as a person. And our muscle... Are, are, are like, at least the kids... Than the kids. They're elite, they're taller than, than um, Elizabeth is. And they seem to be rather muscular. So I can't Do you imagine. mean Emma? No, I was talking about, like, um, they seem taller than uh, Elizabeth. In, like, the first episode, they seem to be... Do you mean be... Emma? No, I'm talking about Mother. Like in the first Isabella. Isabella. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> you called her Elizabeth. Oh. Well, apparently I just fused Emma and um Isabella together. Oh, uh -huh, that should be but a terrifying You're, you're right, that like the demons are relatively tall, although that one demon from the trailer he that seemed pretty smaller short. demon. Like that one demon from the trailer, the small one, I think I think she was a female. Mm -hmm. And she was pretty small and she seemed more human compared to the other ones. So Maybe inbreeding between humans and demons. Like Which solves our issue mm -hmm. from the issue we had that is like an awkward conversation of if the mothers get pregnant and have a children, who's the father? Yeah, that's another Your thing that's really not wide actually on that one. explained. <laughs> Your eyes were like, oh, it's something no. that <laughs> it's something that the show didn't really explain. Like, are the children conceived naturally or artificially? That's yeah. the thing. Like, well, so I, like, I, I would. Is I would, there inbreeding or 
between humans and the demons, or is it like you were saying before, just a subspecies of demon that looks more humanoid, or is Maybe. evolution a possibility? Like the demons evolved. A from human that people. evolved. We got. We, we basically got mm-hmm. Wendigo. The demons are Wendigo confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, maybe, maybe, I, I feel, maybe this is going to be my thing, thing I'm going to say, maybe the lower tier demons, if there is a hierarchy, we basically just agreed that this exists, um, (laughs) that if there is this hierarchy, the lower tier demons are closer to humans, or that there are, there are demons that are, like, nearly human, and maybe that's why they're out in the woods, maybe, um, Maybe the really human-looking demon is the daughter, or like related somehow, to the um, less human-looking demon. And in demon society, if you look really human, they'll just eat you. Hmm. Because like they already eat humans. Hmm. But I I think that because like my other theory was that like may because they okay. I was thinking that, like, maybe every once in a while they'll, like, keep a exceptional male, but they would have to do a lot of that. That was originally how I was thinking that they were going to keep, um, um, Norman? Norman alive, is that he was just selected to, like, grow up so that he could, like, be used to, like, repo- to help repopulate, because I didn't yeah, want him to the die. Thing, like- <laughs> It's true. Like, that would be interesting because, like, again, we don't know how the children are conceived. Is it naturally or artificially? But we know they're keeping girls alive to have the children and to raise the children. Like, that's yeah. basically what Isabella went through and, and Sister Grown. Grown. Yeah. So, but it- do they keep a select view? Because Norman is one of the higher ups. Like, he and Ray were the highest scoring males in yeah. the in plant three so i now that we have this lower this human this like spectrum from demon to human i think not i think there's like i think that some of the the humans who come to the um facility to drop off um supplies and all that for the kids are actually just a sub-tier of demons who are really close to humans like like in genetically or like as a subspecies of the two uh or a hybrid of the two and that they're the ones who well no that doesn't make sense because if then then all the kids are also part demon yeah or hmm. m- maybe they're gonna do funky genetics where like half human half demon plus human equals human and they just don't and if they turn out half he- oh maybe if the um child turns out to be like half demon or like showing traits of being demon they just send them along back with the people who and came. that could be who the girl in the trailer was yeah maybe she was just one of the turned out to be like rather de- turned out to be a little too demon for them and they just sent her back with everyone else hmm. i'm getting very conspiratorial i'll get my like <laughs> whiteboard with like all the pin markers and everything <laughs> yeah i wonder because this was a manga beforehand, so I wonder if anybody who oh, they're familiar gonna with the story, with the story and... who are gonna be like, I'm go- who are gonna be like, sorry to tell you, but it's actually this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just tearing us apart in the comments. Who, like, I hear you right people... now, sir. Put down the keyboard. <laughs> like the people who know what's gonna happen already are probably listening to us and going, "Oh my gosh, these people are crazy." <laughs> These wild theories. Nah, no, nah, they're, they're, they're definitely correcting us in the comments. I'm gonna look. I, I'll pin them. Oh god, now <laughs> I just gave them incentive. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> no, what have I okay, done? I guess now's a good time as ever to say, please don't post spoilers. If you read the manga and you know what happens, please don't post spoilers. Yeah, please don't do that. We, You can... 
once season two is aired, you can come back and say, "Oh my God, you did a you did you did such a stupid thing here. You were so wrong. How could you have ever thought that?" But that's after season two airs, and give it two weeks, please. Give it like everyone time to watch and enjoy, and maybe rewatch if they choose, and then come back and like correct us. We'll probably make a correction video. I'm sorry, I probably just gave you extra work. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine because. If you because... can't tell, I don't know how to edit. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i mean i might do um a series of videos discussing each individual episode so i mean that would be pretty cool uh we could probably we could maybe even do uh more videos in this format if people uh are would be interested in that leave your thoughts down below do you want to see more of this type of freeform content where we just ramble at each other and don't <laughs> follow any script because like i think we've jumped topics about 20 times in the last however long we've been recording for <laughs> <laughs> i'm very sorry if you're just sitting there like what's going on <laughs> no it's fine it's fun okay no, I meant to the I meant to the listener. Are they are they confused about what's going on right now? <laughs> <laughs> so what did we talk about? We talked about the pen. We talked about Phil. I mentioned Isabella a little bit. We talked about the boss, him, whatever you want to call him. We yeah. talked about the Tifari. We talked Tifari. about <laughs> however um, it's pronounced. We talked we had, about like, a whole twenty minute diatribe about that before we started. By the way. <laughs> We talked about the different demons. Are there different demons? We talked about how are the children conceived, and we talked about are there demons who sympathize who sympathize with humans? Are is there an organization of humans and or demons out there? Yeah. Hmm. I will say the one thing. The one thing I really want to know is what are those flowers? Oh, the flowers. Yeah, that the flowers they, they stab them through the heart with. Like, mm. are they just like? I think you remember when I had this weird theory that they actually ate the flowers and that it was like some magical thing that stabbed them in the heart and it just absorbs yeah, their soul. I don't know. Yeah, I remember you mentioned that. I'm still curious because either the flowers are just a like they either the demons have like a really like weird sense for drama and are like, yes, you will die by having a flower punched into your chest. Or they have like an actual like plot sort of narrative. And I wonder what that is. Maybe I don't know if it's like absorbing their blood or if it's like some magical thing where it's like I'm pretty sure it's absorbing their, their blood. Which I'm pretty sure it's absorbing their blood, hence why the petals turn red. Plus, like, when Connie and Sister Crone were killed, like, they looked very, very pale afterwards. Yeah. I mean, I, like, that the could blood also was be, just drained from their faces. Yeah, that could also be, though, them, like, absorbing their life force. True. Which, or maybe there's some symbolic meaning behind it. Yeah. If it is their blood, it brings up the question, do demons just not like blood? Like, do they have some, like, religious obligation not to eat blood? In which case, that's really weird. I just wouldn't have expected that. Like, <laughs> halal or... humans, apparently. <laughs> hmm. uh, or kosher humans. I don't think, I think kosher is the one that, I don't know. I, I probably just upset, like, three different, three different groups of people. <laughs> <laughs> So, any other thoughts before we wrap up? Any other thoughts on what do you think will happen to the children on the outside or the children who are still in the farms? Oh, the one thing we didn't talk about is um, uh, the fact that we see them learning how to fight or, like, someone talking about saying, saying to Emma, oh, if you want to protect your family, you should learn how to fight. And then her, like, drawing a bow, like, um, Catra. Right. And... That makes me think that that demon I, is literally the first thing I have written on the, on the page of like notes is like demon sensei. We're gonna get like the demon training, <laughs> train. We're gonna get a training montage of the demon training everyone how to fight. Well, that makes sense, like for survival purposes, and also if they're ever gonna liberate the other children from the farms and 
save the world from this demon society that has taken over. Yeah, we're going to, by the they, end of... They would have to learn how to fight. Yeah, my prediction is that by the end of season two, we're going to have a bunch of super soldier um, 12-year-olds. <laughs> that's that's what it's going to be. A bunch of, well, not 12, just 12-year-olds. 12 we're going to have a bunch of, like, super soldier kids, like, ready to, like, defeat demons with, like, notches on their, like, white, previously white uniforms that indicate the number of demons they've taken out. <laughs> that's probably not going to happen. It's, that, but, like, I, I'm just imagining if they go full, like, shonen anime style on this. <laughs> what do you think will happen to Isabella and the other children? Because last time we last time we saw them, the house was on fire, and Isabella accepted that she lost. Yeah, that's a really good question, because they now need to repair the destroyed... I think they're going to get moved. They're going to get moved to a different farm. But how will that work? Like, how uh, will they be moved without them seeing the demons or they're going anything? To have, they're going to have extra sisters, extra... Uh, they're going to have grandmother come. They're going to have trucks that are going to be driven by the sisters. And they're just going to drive them to... to uh, Because they have trucks. They're going to drive them to yeah. the next farm. And then either Isabella is going to get the, like... She's going to get Sister Coroned. Or she's going to end up at that new farm with um her children and the other sister or the other mother who was at that farm and her children mm. at least until the demons can repair the um old house um because i don't think the sisters are like architects are, con are really good at construction also it probably won't take as long as we think because a lot of the building was made of stone if i remember correctly was it there's at least a stone foundation. There's like a lot of like, at least the foundation was. Stone. I mean, there was wood. There was wood. It's gonna take them a bit to repair it, but it's not like they're but starting from nothing. But then with multiple demons working on it, and the demons being very large and possibly very strong, it might be easier to get things done faster. Probably. Now, now you just made me think of something really funny, and that's the fact that they're really large but can't like lift a feather. I think that would be really funny. Just. <laughs> All the it's like gonna be that episode of SpongeBob where um, SpongeBob gets like the anchor arms, yeah, and he's like trying to lift the anchor and he just can't do anything. <laughs> no, that's probably not gonna happen. They're probably incredibly strong, and they probably they probably have like contingencies for rebuilding like lost farms. That or they have like a spare farm that's not in use right now that they're gonna move them to. Or they're just going to be sleeping in tents. Maybe they'll do that. And they're going to have, like, humans come in. Maybe the sisters are going to, like, all come in and, like, show themselves as masters of every trade again and be rebuilding the farm. Right, then Interesting. There. I wonder how the children would react. Like, if they were to stay temporarily at another house, would they be surprised that there's another house just like theirs or that there are children just like them? I mean, I guess they weren't Phil wouldn't. too surprised. <laughs> yeah, Phil wouldn't. Like, I mean, I guess the children weren't too surprised when Sister Crone showed up. I mean, the only people who were surprised yeah. or shocked were I mean, these were all Emma, the kids Ray, under and like Norman. Five. These are all the kids under 5, so I think they could give them the flimsiest narrative and they just roll with it. Right. So like cuz like they're little kids, they're probably pretty manipul ma easily manipulated especially if they're not like all high scores like phil like phil i think is like he's like the exception he's like really he's a really smart kid i'm sure like yeah. a lot of the, like, the regular kids are just like oh this is cool more people to play with and then occasionally asking about uh what happened to everyone else i think that's the big thing that's gonna take them oh that's another thing too like they're gonna be like... wondering where's emma where's ray where's dawn where's gilda where's everybody yeah, where is everybody? I feel like that's going to be the main, the bigger sense of um, issues and like, and not corruption, but like, um, breaking of their of the narrative. Then is the um, then if they get do do get moved, then anything that happens about the house, I think that they um, maybe the kids will rebuild the house. Another thing I'm is sorry, like. That was a really weird thing. I you think that Norman might still be alive and I remember I hope Russ he's said alive. He's probably and dead, I remember but... Russ said that 
he thinks maybe Norman might still be alive. If Norman is alive, do you think the demons will approach him shortly after the escape and be like, we know you were initially a part of some failed escape plans. We want you to tell us everything you know. Oh, that would be really interesting. Norm, but I don't. I don't think Norman would. I don't think Norman would snitch like that. I think Norman would. I would just be like, no, you can do whatever you want to me, but I. I won't like help. Like he could say something like, "I was involved in escape plans, but we gave up." when we realized that there was a cliff on the other side of the wall. I mean, like, I'm, he could just play dumb or yeah, just he, he could play innocent. dumb. But, like, I don't, I, even if he doesn't play dumb, I don't think he's going to, like, lie about it. Um, or not lie about it, but give them anything, like, useful. Or that he's going to be, like, sent after them or something like that. I also don't think that would work because, like, uh, Ray would immediately spot that as suspicious the second that something like that happens. Like, if Norman were to show up suddenly? Yeah, if Norman showed up out of nowhere, Ray would be like, I, uh, no, there's something fishy here. Well, I think there would, I think there would be initially some shock and maybe some anger, like, why the heck did you sacrifice yourself? Do you have any idea what that, what you put me through? Like, maybe. Ray was really upset when but Ray also Norman comes... sacrificed himself. Ray comes across to me as, like, a very, very good at, like, thinking things through before acting. So I don't think, I don't think his, I, he might respond like that, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be having red flags raised immediately about why is he not dead and why is he here. That's true. Like, it's really, really easy to, like, spot that as there's something wrong here. Also, right. the only reason I think that Norman might be alive is that we don't see him die, yeah, and he looks surprised out, in the when in the scene where he dies. Quotation marks. Yeah, like Russ pointed out, like we Isabella had Norm, like Norman walked straight to the car because he knew because he saw Carney lying dead in the car, and he was like. It's where it happens. Basically accepting his death, yeah. this is where it's going to happen. And then Isabella calls him over and says, I need you to wait in this room. And he's like, huh? Hmm? Like, what's going on? Yeah. And and that was the room that um, uh, Isabella was talking to the demons in when uh, everyone, when, when in the first episode, when um, Norman and Emma first discovered what was going on. Right. But another thing is, like, when Isabella was talking to Emma later on, she said that Norman was dead. Yeah, but do you think Isabella is going to tell them the truth? <laughs> it's Isabella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Norman's actually alive. He's just somewhere getting, like, special treatment or something. One, Ray and Emma would call that, would, would smell that as, like, absolute lies and, like, torment. And... And Isabella would never tell them that, ever. Yeah. That doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't fit her mo. It doesn't fit her way of control. Because if if she said that, it would just inspire them to escape more, and to like right. try and rescue uh, Norman. But if she tells them, oh, he's dead. Well, then they're gonna probably continue how they were and just accept their death as she wants. She wants. She has like that twisted like twist on her maternal instinct that where she's like, oh. I love these kids, so I'm going to protect them and make sure their lives are as best as they can so they can just die in peace. Right, so they don't have to live with the despair I faced when I was their age. Yeah, or how the despair or pain she feels now. I don't think she's right. doing too well. <laughs> um, yeah. So what was your opinion about the Ray twist, Ray being her kid? That was interesting. Like, that was a really cool twist. Although, when I was editing the video on the opening credits sequence for The Promised Neverland, I was collecting screenshots for that video, and mm -hmm. I was collecting screenshots of Ray. And while I was doing that, it suddenly hit me. He has Isabella's face. Like... Oh, yeah, I remember you told me this. Like, that was actually... 
So maybe that's why his character design is the way it is. Like his hair, yeah, the hair is on face, the one so side. It's less, so it's less obvious. I'm not like you, mom. I don't look like you at all. I'm going to wear my hair like this. I am the emoish kid in the farm. <laughs> I'm like, not I think like it was other more too hot, so the audience wouldn't catch on right away. Yeah, that too. Um, I want. I wonder. I wonder if he's gonna keep that hairstyle as things go on, or if it's not. I I actually think they're all gonna end up with long hair by the end of this, just because like, they're not. They don't have any razors or anything to cut their hair. Their hair's just gonna go really true. long. That well, they brought scissors. They probably brought scissors with them because they supplied themselves pretty well. Yeah, they brought a lot of supplies with them. Yeah. But do you think the children are ever going to see Isabella again? Like, that I, would be interesting. Not in this season. Not in this season. That's my call. I don't think they're going back to the farm this season. I think this season is going to end with... It's either going to end well before they start to head back, or when they are, like, just about ready to head back, and the, sec and the, and the third season will start with them. Returning to the farm. Hmm. So I don't. I don't think. I don't think they could include the whole uh, discover the outside world and then train to fight and stay away from the demons and all that. Also, they're not. They're planning on coming back in like a whole year. Like I think Emma said that they have at least two years until yeah. another kid from their farm gets shipped out. Yeah. So it's like the the first season was like three or four months. So, so it started in October, October, and then November, ended December, in January. Yeah, about four or five months, depending on which day it started on. Um, so basically, like, we have like two or three seasons of content in the time we have remaining before they return to the farm. Which I right, but. If and when they do return to the farm, and if they run into Isabella again, like, I feel like that could be a pretty emotional scene, potentially. Like, S Isabella, because she truly does love these kids, and her potentially seeing these kids at an age she never would have imagined they would be at, like, seeing Ray as a teenager or, an, or a young adult, mm -hmm. like, that can be pretty emotional. Yeah. It would be interesting, because it really did. I, I, I wonder if they'll even show us some of the farm, and if it will just, be, during the second season, it will just be a surprise for when we come back. Hmm. Or maybe, maybe they won't stay out there. Maybe, maybe they will um, get captured by the end of season two and will get left off on a cliffhanger. Hmm. Because there is that scene in the trailer where she's like, where is everybody? They're gone. Right. So that might, that might happen. There's at least going to be one death. There's going to be one, at least one person getting mauled by something. Or mm. just dying from tripping and falling down a cliff. It, 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 it's gonna happen. You shouldn't laugh at that. You <laughs> shouldn't, but you know, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Who, like, okay, so if somebody had to die, who do you think it would be? Do you think it would be I don't Emma, think it's gonna be a named Ray, character. Gilda, Don, or one of the other kids. If it is anyone we who has a name, it will be Don because he is entirely he's because his whole character is he rushes into things and gets a hot head. So he's gonna like rush into something and then like fall down a cliff or something. Hmm. Or I, I what I think is gonna happen is he's gonna be one of the unnamed or like non focal characters. Hmm. Like what? Maybe like one of the like, younger kids, basically. We'll see. We shall see. So, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Everybody, please pray for for Norman so that he may live. Send send your thoughts and prayers to the writer so that they may spare his life and that we can actually be surprised. Also, it was very nice to meet y'all. Um, please let us know down in the comments if you want to hear more of this freeform content um, where we're just talking back and forth, or if you'd like us to be more scripted um, and and not ramble at you for like <laughs> an hour and a half. <laughs> All right. 
so I guess that's it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. And what are your thoughts and theories going into season two? Assuming that you don't already know what happened. Please, no spoilers. Just genuine predictions if you don't know anything. And um, don't be afraid to like and subscribe. Check out our other videos if you haven't already. Be sure to share this video. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. See you Bye. again soon. Bye-bye.